This is Truth in the Afternoon with Dr. Ken Harris. I'm Kyle Wallace filling in for Dr. Ken Harris. And before the break, I kind of gave a tease because I, I, I truly, truly, truly believe that not all, but but some men are black men are failing black women. And I, I say this because what bothers me is that Kamala Harris in her identity and her race being questioned so often. And what worries me about the amount of black men I see on social media from high school and growing all the way up, I know, were texting me and posting about Kamala Harris. Listen, I, I don't care who you vote for, and you know, I, I, I you know, I, but I do care about equally having disdain for all candidates. And what bothered me is that people got mad at Quavo, who spoke about gun violence at Kamala Harris's rally last week. Because he lost his, I believe his, I think it was his uncle. That's what takeoff was to him. But he lost a family member to gun violence and was invited to the White House to discuss that. And since Kamala Harris was in Atlanta, she brought him on and to talk about some of the things that, you know, he experienced and to promote her, right? But then in the same vein, I don't see the same people posting and showing hate about Amber Rose who has literally nothing that she's really accomplished being able to go and speak at the RNC. Now, and then on top of that, I see people mad about Megan the Stallion, who, by the way, focuses on body autonomy for women and is inspirational for women. And I see people bashing her for being there with Kamala Harris and saying this is an absolute embarrassment, but are silent when Kid Rock, who used the N-word, performs at the RNC. This is what I don't understand. Why do we have a standard for who we vote for for Afri for the Democrats and Kamala Harris that we don't hold the other side to the, that same standard? The fact that Kid Rock, who has used the N-word, was at the RNC. The fact that Dana White, who has abused his wife, got to speak at the RNC, but we turn a blind eye to that. We rather tear down an African-American woman and try to delegitimize the African-American woman. It's so self-destructive behavior. Never in my life, Truth Nation, would I think I would hear so many people say a Jamaican isn't black. A Jamaican isn't black. This is asinine and nonsense that we're actually having a conversation about the blackness of Kamala Harris because her daddy is Jamaican and her mama's Indian and all of a sudden she no longer is black. I have never heard anything in my life when we grow up talking about Yaman or some people watch the movie Cool Runnings on Disney as a kid growing up. Or when you go to Jamaica, all you see is dark-skinned people, and all of a sudden, these dark-skinned Jamaican people aren't black enough because Kamala Harris is Jamaican, and now we want to say she's not black enough. Do we realize how stupid we sound when we say that? If you want to judge somebody, don't judge them based off the fact you want to make up lies about their race and about the fact that we allowed a white man to question the race of a black person and think it's acceptable for them to do that and not call them out. I wish somebody would question the race of me. That's a complete joke. I argue that Jamaicans are blacker than us because we assimilate it to American culture. We the ones who want to be like other people that don't look like us. The one thing about Jamaicans is they are pure in who they are and prideful in who they are. The fact that we are questioning this is absolutely laughable. I remember watching Usain Bolt through my late teens and early 20s and took great pride in seeing a black man dominate the sport. I didn't sit there and say, oh, Usain Bolt, I can't celebrate him because he's not a black American, so he's not like us. He's a Jamaican. They're different. Stop it. Absolutely stop it. They are more purely themselves than our assimilated behinds. I bet you they ain't got a cold switch in Jamaica like we cold switch here in America. So I think it's an absolute joke for us to question somebody's race. For black folks to sit here and some who have higher education and, and choose to go to a predominantly white institution. You chose. 
You are a black person who chose to go to a predominantly white institution for college and going to sit there and question the blackness of somebody who went to a HBCU and chose to go to a HBCU at 18. Even if you don't believe Kamala Harris is black enough, since she's been 18, she's been black enough. She made a decision to go to a historically black college and university at 18. And meanwhile, y'all sitting here trying to question her blackness when you took your behind the white water to Oshkosh, to Madison. That is absolutely ridiculous for us to question somebody's blackness who obviously made a decision at 18 to attend a HBCU, who made a decision in her early 20s to join Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority, the first Greek, black Greek letter female organization in this country. Come on now. And to have an imbecile like Donald Trump say she just became black, Truth Nation, he thinks y'all stupid. And instead of discussing policies, He's taking personal shots and personal attacks. 833-212-1017. Julius, you're on the war winning 1017 The Truth. Where are your thoughts? All right. Uh, good topic, Kyle. I mean, I, I couldn't agree with you more, 100%, 1,000. I mean, the thing is, uh, what I see is, uh, you know, we can't, we can't, you know, like they say, black folks, we, 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 we we got style, we got class and stuff like that. We do things. What we can't do is, uh, you know, go for something shiny. We need to, uh, you know, it's uh, uh, a lot of times we do, we, we will vote for a style over substance. Because what Donald Trump is, he's, he's just putting on a show. And people are falling for it. How could you best, how could you vote against your own best interest? I, you know, Julius, thank you so much. I, I I, don't know. I think I can't tell people what their best interest is, and I'm not here to tell anybody what their best interest is. I I'm understand just, that. I'm just, uh, I'm just upset about the narrative that I hear on a national stage of people talking about questioning somebody's blackness. Somebody, you know, somebody and, questioning. Uh, well, wasn't it about in the past if you had one drop of black blood, you were black? When, now it's changed. Well, uh, Jim, Kamala Harris is black, and I think she'll make a good president. And I'm not a Democrat or Republican, but I do real at reality. Whatever policies that I think is going to promote and, and, and makes our country better for each other, black and white, or whatever, you know what I'm saying? I That's what it. matters. Not all of this tomfoolery. Uh, yeah, this is idiotic. Julius, I think you said it the best. I think Julius made a great point, right? The young, the one drop rule is only convenient, right? Now that we want to try to take away somebody's blackness, and again, I, I just think it's completely laughable. I have a friend, I'm a, my good friend, who texted me, who went to a junior college, and he went to a white junior college down in Illinois, and made a decision to go to a white, probably white school instead of going to a HBCU, and want to tell me somebody ain't black. I told Negro, get off my line. I ain't got time for this. 833-212-1017. Sandra, you're on the war winning 1017 The Truth. What are your thoughts and comments? We got about two minutes. Oh, 60 seconds, Sandra. Sorry. Uh, oh, okay. Um, no, I think uh, Trump is a distraction because a lot more is going on behind. He's the one to punch, the punch bag. He's the boldest one to do the job. But the rest of them hide behind him, and then they come out all this 20, probably 2025 20, anyways. But when, um, if he gets it, he already said he's going to put his military on the black folks. He's going to have uh, police get complete immunity. Uh, and, and he's the biggest crook in the world because look at January 6th. And then all of a sudden he gets shot. How come all this stuff came about all of a sudden when he gets in office, voter fraud? Everything, just everything. He's the biggest crook. This is gangster. So I think what we need to do, uh, we need to look at what each of them stand for, because Trump never says it's just the only thing he do is racism, and see what Kamala says she wants to do, and see what our regular state representatives, you know, say they're going to do that we're voting for then. So I think we got to, you know, get on the ball and look at what everybody's going to do, because like they said, the president's just a figurehead. So, but he can call the shots for some other stuff like the abortion stuff, you know, certain things he can. But I think we're just going to have to uh, get together and start reading and looking into 
both parties, uh, Democratic Party, how all of this got about, you know, how all this mess came about I, that we're fighting so hard. No, okay. Th- thank you, Miss Sandra. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for calling and listening and always, Miss Sandra. I really do appreciate that. And I think she makes a lot of great points. 833-212-1017. This is Truth in the Afternoon with Dr. Ken Harris. I'm Kyle Walsh. We'll wrap up the show coming up next, but keep it locked because I got more information to tell you. Don't touch that dial. More of Truth in the Afternoon with Dr. Ken Harris is next on 1017 The Truth, The Truth app, and 1017thetruth.com.